Yeah, thanks, Beck, uh, and thanks to Kalarzi as well for this opportunity, by the way. Uh, it's my part of PhD. Uh, I have focused particularly for today's presentation on systemic tensions and emergence of ICT affordances and contexts of Nepal, which I will deal later as well. And thanks everyone for joining. Uh, my presentation outline, uh, at first I will focus on context. I will highlight context and allude to the guiding framework that I have used here. And uh, as a part of finding, I'll present systemic tensions and emerging affordances, and later this will be followed by discussion. Uh, this is the context, uh, like uh, Nepal, this is during the COVID-19 pandemic in Nepal. Uh, I mean, my research took place during the COVID-19 pandemic in Nepal. Uh, and Nepal, as you see here, like uh, I focused on two different, uh, let's say, places. One is semi-urban area. Let me pick the highlighter as well. Just a second, please. Yeah, so. Sorry, let me uh, let me take the pointer, laser pointer. Yeah, okay. So this is the semi-urban area, Lomjung, uh, whereas Kathmandu Valley, this is the capital city. So my re I conducted my research in these two different locations. Uh, the, the data were collected from here, particularly for this uh, work, for this presentation. It's from five school five schools, and participants were teachers, two science and two English teachers, school students, secondary level school students, 12 of them, and three parents, three policymakers, two school managers, that means school heads, and two teacher trainers. Uh, so activity theory, I, I use activity theory as a guiding framework. So activity theory considers uh, activity system as, as a unit of analysis, and in my case, because I have focused on multiple interacting activ activity systems. So I have modeled here teaching activity system and learning activity system, which I'll show, show you. Uh, uh, next, like activity theory considers subject, for instance, in my case here, secondary level science and English teachers uh, carry out object oriented activity. For example, in my case, the object of this activity system was engaging pupils in learning course content during pandemic. So this was the object. So subject carry out object oriented activities mediated by uh, different artifacts or tools. For example, teacher used video conferencing platforms, digital contents, mobile applications, and tasks to engage students and so on. And even their digital skills as well mediated the activity. Alongside these mediating tools and artifacts, there are rules community and division of labor that, that mediate their activity as well. So we can see a very broader interaction here. So rules, for example, classroom rules or continuous assessment system, institutional rules are there. So as a community, they are one fellow teachers and students and division of labor, which re refers to roles and relationship, for example, roles. Um, sometimes it can be vertical, sometimes it can be horizontal. For example, if teachers support each other, it's a horizontal role. But teachers assisting students as there is a vertical division, it's a vertical role. Um, so this is the active, this is the teaching activity system which I have modeled for my study. Next, this is learning activity system. Uh, as you see, uh, I mean the only difference here is like secondary level pupils as subject, and their object is learning course contents and other mediating artifacts almost similar uh, rules the same rules and community, the same community and like division of labor in this case, like pupils helping each other during learning. This is the horizontal relationship, whereas if teachers assist pupils, so it is the vertical relationship. Now, the research question that guided my work is here, for, I mean, for this presentation, what systemic tensions and ICT affordances emerged and to what extent were those affordances acted upon by secondary level teachers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Before I proceed further, just to make it slightly interactive, I would like to run a quiz here in uh, Mentimeter. So could you please uh, go to menti.com or, yeah, I mean, you can scan this QR code as well. And, uh, and yeah, uh, I'll run the presentation there as well. There's a, there one more question, so which you will 
answer and we'll have a kind of opinion. So the code is 38750658. Mm, I'll stop presenting this one. Or what I can do is just a second, please. Yeah, I'll just. Uh, Big, can you see my Mentimeter now? Yes, I, okay. I, yeah, we can see the screen. So the question here is, which one of the following do you think was one of the issues Nepalese teachers faced in relation to online teaching during the COVID-19 pandemic? What do you think? Like there are four different options that I have inserted. Lack of institutional, yeah, I can see here, lack of institutional cooperation, low engagement of the pupils, lack of motivation in teaching online, lack of peer support. Yeah, I can see right now five of you have answered. So let's wait for uh, yeah, uh, some time. Uh, I'll wait for 30 seconds. OK, so. Yeah, six of you have answered and what I found here is like majority of you, like four, four of you have said lack of institutional cooperation was one of the issues that the teachers faced. Uh, whereas my study shows low engagement of the pupils was the uh, like major issues. They didn't complain over lack of institutional cooperation, rather they got the uh, institutional cooperation as well, whereas you know engagement of the pupils was a major issue. So. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I mean, it shows like uh, how we might happen to think of one particular th factor as the, you know, let's say issues, but it can be other as well, which I will highlight later. Yeah, so the correct, yeah, this is the one. Uh, let me again go back to the slides. My, okay, the research instruments that I used our classroom observation, so it they were online classroom observations, so 12 of them. Interviews, I conducted 11 interviews with the teacher, parents, school heads, and policymakers. I have said with the teacher only, or teacher, only one teacher. The reason is she couldn't take part in focus group discussion as a result, like, you know, I interviewed part later. And focus group discussions, two with students, two focus group discussions, and one with teachers. So uh, the data that I'll be presenting will be based on uh, this, uh, let's say this, uh, let's say will be produced by these research instruments. Uh, let me briefly highlight like, you know, contradictions and affordances as uh, they are the key concepts that I'm, you know, using here as well. Contradictions, they, they represent fundamental concept in activity theory. Uh, and they, they indicate misfits, disruptions, disturbances, etc. It can be either within the elements, for example, within the node, as I as I showed you the triangle there, like it can be within object, let's say, or within object and mediating tool, or sometimes within two different activity systems, as, as I showed you, like one in the teaching activity system and one in the, you know, let's say between the uh, teaching and learning activity system as well. Uh, contradictions are systemic tensions, which emerge either within or between activity systems, and they produce disturbances and conflicts. Sometimes they also, you know, lead for some novel attempts to change the activity, which I will show you again later uh, through my own work. Engstrom uh, delineates four different levels of contradictions, like primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So primary contradictions within the element of activity system, for example, within object, secondary contradictions that emerge across the elements in the activity system, for example, object and meditating tool, let's say. Tertiary contradictions, it's quite interesting, like as they occur when new intervention is directed towards the, you know, object or motive, what, even if there is a tendency to go back to the, you know, old way of doing things. So uh, there emerge the tertiary contradictions and quaternary contradictions between the elements of two interacting activity systems. So uh, yeah, I'll refer to these terms as well during my presentation. 
So affordances, Gibson was the first person to coin the term affordances, and by by affordances, he means uh, the action possibilities that environment offers to the organism, and it can be either for a good purpose or for you know ill purpose as well. Uh, different scholars have classified affordances in different ways. For example, let let me just take the example of Kirchner at all uh, in. While proposing design framework for collaborative learning, he proposed technological affordances, social affordances, educational affordances. For example, technological technological affordances as let's say technological attributes which help users to which create opportunities for users to carry out actions in an efficient way. Social affordances, the of the again action possibilities of technologies uh, which promote social interaction. Educational affordances. Um, the uh, the web tool can be deemed of having educational affordances if uh, users, uh, let's say, if users carry out tasks in a collaborative learning, uh, collaborative way in a teaching and learning situation. So it's, it's educational affordances. Yeah, I mean, I won't go through this all. Uh, now, in my case here, uh, what I did is I categorized contradictions or systematic sy systemic tensions under five different themes. For example, like power cuts poor internet connection, limited digital skills of teachers, lack of learners engagement and institutional uh, and classroom rules. Uh, first one, power cuts, which leads to technological breakdowns. Uh, like in my case, what, what I found is frequent, I mean, in my case, in a sense, in, in my research, what I found is uh, frequent power cuts remained one of the issues in online sessions teachers and pupils often they rejoin during the sessions uh, and this also the power cuts you know led to the communication breakdown for example as there was a power cut there was no internet on teacher end so pupils waited for quite a long time then teachers never appeared and later only they could you know discontinue so it also in this way it also led to a technical silence which you know stickler suggests See, uh, this is the interview excerpt from the policymaker who highlighted, who strongly highlighted how irregular the electricity flow was and to what extent there was power cuts and resumptions. Sometimes even there was the, the you know, fluctuation in the voltage as well. As a result, they were also quite worried about the equipments they were using, which could blast any time, as, as you said. Uh, in this case, what we see here is the contradictions between object uh, object in the teaching activity system. For example, the object of the teaching activity system was to engage pupils in learning course content. But what happened was there was a power cut, which was power was the mediating tool here. Power supply was the mediating tool. So as you know, uh, teachers could not continue engaging pupils in learning course content uh, due to the problem in power supply. The let's say the the contradiction was between mediating tools and object. So this is the uh, secondary contradiction. Poor internet connection, disturbances in science and English sessions were also very frequent owing to poor internet connection. Poor internet connection and power cut was slightly different because power cut led to no connection, but even the poor internet connection as well was, you know, uh, triggering disturbances in the classrooms. For example, here this is the uh, from the student focus group discussion. One of the students told uh, internet was poor on teachers and therefore like they couldn't understand what teachers were saying and even those slides were not clear at all. Uh, also, it's not only on the teachers end, even on the pupils end as well, contradictions, contradictions existed due to poor internet connection or no internet connection. For example, here uh, a student was complaining that she couldn't open the chat message which the teacher had shared, shared there for the activity. So they were having problems. So it's both you know, it's the teacher's internet connection as well, and then the people's internet connection too, which also triggered for contradictions or systemic tensions. In this case, the latter one, uh, it existed between a mediating tool of learning activity system and object of teaching activity system, as you see. So it is, uh, it is quaternary contradiction. Limited digital skills of teachers. Uh, teachers' digital skills was one of the mediating tools, as I highlighted before as well, uh, to enable teachers to take part in this activity. So the evidence, let's see the evidence of Mentimeter activity. What teacher did was teachers set up uh, 
tax in Mentimeter. So then he, see, there were two different questions in the Mentimeter. After searing first question, when she wanted to transition to the second question, she struggled really. And what she did was she rather to, to solve this problem, she deleted the first question and she showed the you know second question. Only she could do that way. So it it clearly uh, marks that you know uh, they were in need of some uh, training or some kind of you know assistance to uh, to let's say use the technology. So. Sorry, it's, there's a code slide. So uh, yeah, uh, here the uh, this is the excerpt from uh, parent, by the way. So what what he says is not besides not this is not related to Mentimeter activity, but this is a different one. So what he says is pupils oftentimes struggled in Teams or Zoom. Uh, for example, teacher happened to create multiple uh, links. As a result, they waited on one link. Uh, when you know students were on the other link, so I mean, then there was a there was a kind of uh, let's say situation where students and teachers never met with each other as well. So it clearly shows like uh, the I mean, teachers required to gain some digital skills to tackle these issues. Next is lack of learners engagement, which I highlighted uh, in the Mentimeter poll as well. Lack of learners engagement is manifested by disruptions. Or disturbances. Particular example is virtual crossing. By virtual crossing, it it means like shift of learners' attention from mediated world to the real world. So they, when there is the creation of nested spaces, right? There are there are two different spaces. One is the space virtual space in team, and next one is the physical space where the student is, is situated. So in this case, what happens is uh, the student uh, who was taking part in one of the sessions through Teams. He happened to talk to a family member while attending an online class, and as she didn't, sorry, see, as she didn't realize, uh, as she didn't see, realized like the microphone was not muted. As a result, like it was heard by everyone, and you know it, 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 it disturbed for some time in the classroom. So the virtual copsing is yeah one of the examples here. Next virtual next example of virtual copsing again. Uh, student, one of the students was watching a movie, Hindi movie, uh, while attending the class. And again, he also didn't realize, like, you know, he hadn't muted his microphone. As a result, again, it was quite loud enough. Students were, other students who heard this voice, they laughed at, you know, the, uh, I mean, the dialogues of the movie. So again, it, it brought the disturbance. So it clearly shows lack of engagement of learners. Next, also the breakdown in communications. It's not only virtual co copsing. There's the instance of breakdown in communications as well. As for example, the pupils did not speak to the teacher when teacher was, you know, asking question. When you know she was triggering them to speak uh, on certain prompts. So th this shows like the quaternary contradiction. For example, division of labor, pupils. Lack of cooperation with teachers and uh, you know teachers object in teaching activity system, which was engaging pupils in learning course content content. So this lightning arrow shows uh, the quaternary contradiction between these two different elements here in two different activity systems. Final one, institutional and classroom rules. Uh, institutional rules and classroom rules in activity systems constrain particularly the activity uh, object oriented activity. So uh, these rules also play some roles for disruptions. For example, let's take the example of taking attendance when pupils were engaged in tasks. What happened was teacher had to take attendance to track their presence in the online classroom. As a result, what she would do is she used to engage them in activity. At the same time, she would take attendance by calling their names, by calling out their names, and students also had to you know, speak. So this actually interrupted their classroom activity. So the emerging rule uh, brought some, you know, uh, let's say tension uh, within the, or let's say brought some disruption within the classroom activity. Uh, so it's a secondary contradictions, secondary contradiction as contradiction existed within the teaching activity system, like between rules and object. Next, uh, let's example of rule. 
uh, here in this example, uh, teacher was asking pupil to, uh, yeah, uh, change the profile picture as they were supposed to do, as they were they they had to have a good profile picture. So while again she was giving activity to the students, she also requested them to change their profile picture. So this again the new rules in the online setting uh, triggered for the contradiction between rules in TAS, teaching activity system, and division of labor as they didn't you know, do it, even if they were told earlier, so division of labor in learning activity system. So what are the roles of these contradictions then? Contradictions often lead to the design and implementation of new initiatives, by the way, which are the action possibilities, and they were acted upon by educational stakeholders, in this case, the teachers. And so I, basically what I mean to say here is contradictions lead to the you know, emergence of new initiatives or action possibilities. Um, so the action possibilities that ICT environment offered, which teachers acted upon, are the affordances of technology for teaching and learning. In my resource, uh, I have highlighted two affordances, technological affordances and educational affordances. Uh, so technological affordances, the properties of ICTs, the, uh, the attributes of ICT that subjects could use for the specific purposes in teaching and learning context, their technological affordances. Whereas educational affordances, by realizing those technological affordances, uh, again, teachers could uh, sense the action possibilities or they could act upon the action possibilities that ICT tools or artifacts offer uh, to achieve the educational outcomes. So they are the educational affordances. Uh, let's see here. So the tools that the teachers used, Google Meet, MS Teams, Power, Microsoft PowerPoint, Mentimeter, Notes in Mac, and the design technological affordances are the ones that I have listed here, uh, just next to tools in the middle. Uh, and affordances that teachers acted upon are, for example, sharing a screen, turning on and off a camera, admitting guests, and so on. For example, in Mentimeter case, which I was highlighting, live polling, asking multiple choice questions, asking open-ended questions, tracking time. This way, these are the, or using pictures in slides, using different colors, fonts and font size, in case of, you know, uh, let's, in case of using PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint. So, yeah, these are the uh, technological affordances which they acted upon. Uh, this shows, this shows the frequencies of technological affordances acted upon by science and English teachers. Uh, the frequency was counted by segmenting sequences or accents within the activity or within the innovation. Now, educational affordances. As I told you earlier, like some educational affordances of ICT emerged with the realization of technological affordances. So for educational affordances to be acted upon, teachers should have realized or acted upon the technological affordances as well. For example, by using technology, what they could do is they could bring variety to a lesson delivery or clarify terms and concepts of a lesson. What they did, they used multiplicity of modes, such as visuals, movement, color, speech, text, all which contribute to a meaning. And with the help of them, they could bring variety at the same time, clarify terms and concepts. And also engage learners in the tasks. For example, in this case, the use of ment strong cases, the use of Mentimeter, how or use of chats as well, how she could, use, she could engage learners in different tasks. Uh, the first example, how like, you know, they could bring variety in the, uh, in the classrooms, in, in their lessons uh, using, for example, here she used GIF and uh, again, different colors. Some like, you know, highlighting with a separate color as well and yeah, and use of text. So multiple modes have been used to, or multiplicity of modes have been used here to clarify uh, the content. Uh, next is clarifying terms and, sorry, bringing variety earlier. So clarifying terms and concepts of a lesson here. Uh, so, yeah, in this case, a pupil asked a question if the, you know, because in this, this is the science classroom and teacher was teaching uh, different receptors of the tongue. Uh, and she showed the, first of all, she showed the picture as well, which have, which segmented 
the tongue in different parts and which shows the different test receptors. So the pupil asks the question if the sweet receptor can sense the source, source test, sorry, sour test. And teacher showed the division of a tongue in a figure with the cursor. He was pointing, sorry, she was pointing a cursor. And she explained where different test receptors were by showing a picture of a tongue uh, which was connected to the brain through knobs. So this clearly shows how technology was helping her to clarify terms and concepts of a lesson, and she was acting on this you know, potential. Uh, engaging learners in the talks. This is the example of Mentimeter. What she did was, she, as I explained to you earlier as well, uh, she had created certain questions to engage them. For example, how does the poet describe one's life in the later stage of life after teaching a particular poem? And once students shared their answers, she read out their, she, showed, she displayed their answers on the screen and she read them out. So this is how she was engaging students. Uh, she was engaging students in the talks as well. So discussion. After all, yeah, what are these then? So teachers had to work in a very limited and difficult circumstances during the pandemic. One, like lack of you know, technological skills. Two, access to the technology itself was poor, but still they had to. So often they encountered disruptions in their sessions. And some systemic tensions, for example, which were triggered by power cords or poor internet connections, they were out of control. They couldn't do so. Only thing that they would do was they, could they would leave the class and continue the lesson in another class, but some other they could control. Uh, learners less engagement in sessions, which emerged as one of the overarching systemic tensions. Uh, now, because learners were less engaged, so what they did was they acted upon several technological and educational affordances of ICT. For example, they designed warm up activities in Mentimeter, trying to engage them. They showed videos, they used multiplicity of you know, modes, for example, in PowerPoints, text, uh, GIF, pictures, or uh, multicolored you know, text. So yeah, uh, they acted upon several technological or educational affordances of ICT. So to resolve the systemic tension, they went beyond regular way of instruction. They learned the ways to act on ICT affordances and acted on them. So next interesting thing which I have noted is uh, the emerging systemic tension, which I mean the emerging systemic tension triggered them to accomplish expansive transformation. By expansive transformation, I mean here teachers reconceptualized the object. The first object was uh, let's engaging pupils in uh, learning, right? But what they did, the object reconceptualized. Later, the object of them was gaining ICT skills to handle new tools. I'll show this in this, you know, using this figure. So here, this is a transformative, uh, expansive transformation in teaching teacher activity system or teaching activity system. See, the first need was need during the pandemic was to continue teaching and learning, right? So that was the need. Teacher source for the object for this need. And they found out their object was engaging pupils in lessons. Now, when they tried to do so, there was you know tension or yeah, systemic tension that was contradiction. That was lack of digital skills. They didn't have you know uh, good digital skills then to engage them. So what they did was, with the support of their peers who who knew who had got some digital skills, or with the support of some professional institutions, professional organizations. Uh, with the support of their schools as well, they gained digital skills and they modeled the new situation. That means they started taking online classes here. Again, after taking online classes as well, what happened was there was lack of pupils engagement again. There was another layer of contradiction which emerged. Now to now to tackle this, what they did, they they reconceptualized their motive. That means earlier motive was to engage pupils in teaching and learning, engage pupils in the lesson you know, con content. But now what they had to do, they had to learn new technological skills. So they learned new you know, technological skills and they acted on technological affordances. They started using them. Finally, which this you know, action consolidated the new practice. And now they are using you know, technologies widely in their you know, classroom context. So this is quite interesting to see how there is 
how there is an emergence of expansive transformation in teaching teacher activity system. Thank you. And these are for further readings. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, hopefully, I mean, my presentation was clear. Thank you. <laughs>